Hello friends, Naya Swami Hreeman here, and once again it is time to ask a yogi. I often get questions, particularly since I wrote the book The Once and Future Christ, just how literally we should take the, the Bible, and I would say especially the New Testament, for example, this being the time of year of Christmas and the holidays, I had a question recently that came in from, uh, let's see, Mike in Canada, in which he asks whether or not the um, story of the virgin conception of Jesus Christ was literally true. <clears throat> and these are interesting and appropriate questions. That story is repeated in other traditions you might be interested to know. For example, the mother of Lord Buddha was um, said to have conceived in the immaculate or non-sexual manner. Um, Krishna too, I believe, in the same thing. So these things, whether or not they are factually true, certainly we can understand they indicate uh, a divine presence a purity of incarnation, an incarnation without stain of what Christians would call original sin, Hindus might and Buddhists might call karma, doesn't matter. So that's the deeper meaning of this. Is it literally true? Well, um, scientists have, have actually validated certain instances in the animal kingdom of a non-sexual conception, even though that was by no means the norm. The story I remember had to do with a female shark in captivity who miraculously <laughs> became pregnant. But perhaps more to the point, Yogananda taught, and maybe other great teachers have done so also, but um, Yogananda taught that in a higher age and in the higher regions of heavenly realms known as the astral realms, conception can take place in this immaculate or non-sexual manner. So he did teach that and therefore he either taught or implied that the virgin birth was also literally true. But whether or not we can't validate that, we sh should at least be open to what the meaning of that birth is. That that child, the child Jesus, Buddha, Krishna, etc., um, comes into human form without the burden of past karma, without the burden, again, as the Christian might say, of an original uh, sin in the past. It's all really the same thing. So um, so it is with so many things. For example, did um, uh, the Blessed Mother ascend into heaven? Did Jesus Christ ascend into heaven? Did Ezekiel ascend and Elias ascend on a chariot into heaven? Well, these are, uh, I think, they are obviously metaphors, once again, for the power of that soul to dematerialize their body because of the purity and power of their consciousness and ascend into the etheric realms um, in a conscious manner without having to, what we would say, die, you know, close your eyes and become unconscious. Uh, that's the deeper meaning of these ascensions whatever literalness might have been implied, well, why not when, you're, when you have that kind of power to raise the dead, etc., why not ascend into heaven? But, uh, but obviously the physical body isn't going to survive in those etheric regions. It would have to be converted to its, its ethereal form. So it amounts to the same thing. So let's go deeper than literal um, and see the, because the deeper meaning is what's important to us, to become pure in spirit. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And what form does God have? No form at all. God is pure bliss. 